guy. New South, South Wales. Wales. Take care up here. Oh, we're back in the country. Yeah, yeah, oh, he's going across, is he? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's not worried about us. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. Thank you for looking. Thank you for <laughs> He looked to check for us. <laughs> he's checking out the grass everywhere. We're coming down the hill here into Warrialda. It's quite a big town from up the top there, lots of houses. We're hoping that we might find a bakery today to grab a bite for lunch. We're a little bit late because it's 2.30 here, but we've come from Queensland where it's only 1.30, so hopefully they've got something left. It's funny, coming from over in Western Australia and Northern Territory where we've traveled long distances, sort of like we are today, but there's not much on the way. Whereas here on the East Coast, even though we're inland, there's little country towns fairly frequently, so there's lots of spots to stop. And they're not so little either, some of them. They're fairly big. Look at this, reverse street parking. Yeah, this is this is a Queensland thing usually. We're in New South Wales now though. I've never seen it. Yeah, I've never a few noticed places it. New South Wales had it. Uh, Queensland had it. Really? Yeah. Have a look how weird it is. Yeah, you're going to go in backwards, come out forwards. It does oh. look weird. Yeah, it really <laughs> it does. It's really weird. <laughs> Been on the road for a few hours now, so from Gundawindi through to Tamworth, you're looking at about a three and a half to four hour drive. But it's been great passing through all these country towns. They're really nice, They're, they park weird, but um, the streets themselves are really, really well kept. Lots of shops. Um, you can clearly see you're back on the East Coast, all the big brands are there, Country Targets, and Minor 10, and uh, Super Cheap Order, and Repco, and things like that. So everything you sort of need. We're, we're pushing through, you know, we're stopping for rests in a couple of them and grabbing lunch where we can, but um, our main target today is just getting through to that Tamworth and start exploring New South Wales. This is pretty cool, this work of art. We are driving along and the way it's designed, he actually moves as you come across, coming from this angle because they're all lined up, but when you get to the front, you can see the three men across it. We're just looking at the detail of the painting. Well, in his jeans, he's quite astounding. I can never understand how they actually get the scale. It's really, really clever. Steph's just become stunned because I've been able to decipher this piece of art. I am a I connoisseur. Skill, I am a connoisseur of fine arts. I was just explaining to the boys that the farmer's actually, he's got the, he's trying to find water and he's starting to dry up and blow away in the wind. So they're losing farmers because of the drought. They're starting to blow away. That's at least an interpretation of it. Here we are in Tamworth. We're back in the big town again. We're heading into the showgrounds to stay for a couple of nights. All of these towns down the, so I guess the inner east coast area, the New South Wales area, all have showgrounds and they're all around that $25 a night mark, which is really good value, particularly for families when that's a flat rate rather than charging for children on top of that. And that includes power and water. So particularly at the moment when it's mid thirties, it's 36 at the moment over there. Uh, that means that we can have some air conditioning at least and try to keep cool. So we've just woken up, it's early. And Steph said to me, now don't get angry, but have a look out the window. <laughs> We're at a showground. It's massive. Like it goes all the way down there and it goes all the way back, all the way over there. There's a caravan over there. There's a caravan right there. And they've got dogs right next to us. Like what goes through people's head, it's a massive place. You can park wherever you like. And this guy's parked right next to us. There we are. There's our friends. And there's all the space you could have. <laughs> it's a really hot day today. And to be honest, none of us felt like a hot meal or a cooked meal. But I did have a roast pork out. So we've worked with that. I am so looking forward to dinner tonight. I've made this roast pumpkin salad with some halloumi and spinach. And it's got a mustard dressing tossed to it. Yum, yum, yum. Some soba noodles with a dressing of balsamic vinegar, soy sauce, uh, olive oil and some sesame oil in there as well. And we've got a good old potato salad over here. First up here in Tamworth, we're going to go to the Australian Country Music Hall of Fame. We haven't done anything around country music here in Australia and our lap of Australia so far. We saved the absolute best to last. We're going to go teach the boys a little bit about the country music history in Australia. arrived, they brought lots of convicts who were different instruments 
and slowly people came from around Australia to start making new music and, and soon people were working together to create new songs. Tex Morton came along and started singing American songs but then he, eventually he realised that everyone wanted Australian songs so someone else came but called Buddy Williams came along and he started singing Australia, like he continued the country style music but um, did it about Australia. So Tex Morton is recognised as the father of Australian country music and when it was all picking up over in the US with the invention of the radio and the gramophone, Tex quickly realised that people in Australia wanted him to sing about Australia so he started writing songs and recording them and it took off and people loved it. Country music became really popular and Smokey Dawson did travelling shows. In the 60s and 70s they started making radio music where um, all the country music would be played and everyone would, could listen to it and then they started making awards for TV and TV. This is one company that makes it for us, but here's another bigger one. <laughs> so we've got lots in the background. Yeah. We've just come out of the uh, Country Hall of Fame, which was an awesome display. We're heading around now to see the gold and guitar tie it all together. The marsupial park here is open from 8am to 5pm daily. It's free entry, so you just come and let yourself in. We actually thought it was closed when we pulled up because there's uh, no other cars in the car park, so I guess it's just us in here. This is all free, and there's wallabies, emus, a whole bunch of different marsupials, there's even a bird park over here, and an adventure playground. These ducks are very friendly ducks. Seeing if he wants some water. That's not a baby. That's not a baby duck feed bottle. Oh, yeah. he's very thirsty. You want some too? You can get your own water. <laughs> this guy was just sitting down, so you can make. Looking for water. Mum, he, he's just seeing oh, if there's any food on your feet. for your toe, Jed. He feels like there's any. Yeah. He's trying to do if there's any. Hey, Good job. Um, stuff on, his, on your feet, like food on your feet. Put out your foot for him, Mum. Hello. I'm um, put out your foot to him. Um, put out your foot to him. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, yeah, what's this, what's this, Mummy? Mm. Num. No, he eats you and it's he tickly. Eats foot. It's tickly. He eats you. Mm -hmm. See, he's, he's eating. He's giving you a drink. Look, eat me. Eat my toe. <laughs> <laughs> eat my toe. Hello. How are you? Are you good? Hello, Cocky. What's up? Hello mate. You okay to be on video? Can you be on video, Cocky? Cocky, you on video? Dance, Cocky, dance. Pretty awesome. So there's just bird ovaries everywhere and massive playground. Kids are going to go have a bit of a go. to our accommodation. 
We're staying on a private property for the next couple of days. Quite often we check out wiki camps and find where we're going to stay on there. And there's lots of people who offer private property these days, often with power and water, um, as we're getting today, for a much cheaper rate than you might find elsewhere. And it's often a nice quiet environment to stay in too. We've declared it kids cook dinner night tonight. So we've got everyone in the kitchen except for mum and dad. How good's that? Jed's over here and he's on the stove. I'm cooking some meat and some beans here. Perfect for inside I'll our turn tacos. The beans off now, so be good now. Looks good. Mm -hmm. Al's got his grater and he's about set to grab the, the cheese out. He set the table. It looks really nice, Al. Looks beautiful. Thanks. We've got a table centerpiece in here and a menu. Beautiful. And I think they're going to clean up the mess as they go in a sec. You're going to do that, right, boys? Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Western Plains Zoo, Taronga. So this is part of the Sydney Zoo, owned by the same group. So it's going to have an African feel, I reckon. Cool. Yeah, I have a feeling there was one. Just buying our tickets online. We're going to save about 20 bucks by doing it on the phone, as opposed to buying it at the counter. So she's logging in. Then she'll take it from the counter. <laughs> it is a bizarre place. <laughs> so we've just bought our tickets to the zoo and we're about to go out walk and she says, no, no, you need your car. So it's a five kilometre loop. I'll show you on the map. So we start down here is the zoo entry and then we actually get to drive around all of the enclosures, giraffes, zebras, etc., all the way around. It's five kilometres from start to end and there's parking bays along the way. That's a, my kind of zoo. Let's go. Here we go into the zoo with our car. Morning officers. Hi. How are you? How are we? Good, thanks. Serious rig here. It is a serious rig. It's done a few k's. Yeah. What's up? We're going to go see some rhinos and meerkats. Meerkats. So it's a Sunday. Normally they're working for the insurance company. But on a Sunday they're here in the zoo. Black rhinos. And this one right there. Right in front of me. Right there, that's the place you've ever seen. Rhin rhino there. Right? This must be where the rhinos go on holidays. Off to a Bali type setting. Looks like we've come at the right time for the drafts. Look at that. Look at they're all coming over. Might be feeding time. Oh, look at these guys. They are everywhere. Coming in here to the hippopotamus. Mm -hmm. Weighs about 1.8, 1.9, with the males getting up to about three ton when fully grown. So hippos in the wild live for about 35 to 40 years. In captivity, they can get into their 50s, and the longest living hippo, she was about 61. So in the wild, hippos do eat a variety of different grasses. They'll eat grasses along the river banks, and they'll also travel great distances in search for food. So they'll do this at night if the days are really hot or if you've got nice cool days you might see them out and about a bit more. Just send me some stub tailed wallaby coming down to get a drink. So they have a little stub on the end of their tail and it's like a small bit of bone that just stuts out and no one knows whether they use us for fighting or itching or what. Harry, these are the white handed gibbons. Dad thought they had gloves on. Because their hands are white. Where is he, Elle? On the tree, he's hanging upside down. On the tree. Oh, there it is. He's hanging on the tree upside down. Looks like he's got white feet too. <laughs> he's dropped down. We're coming. This guy is on the rope. Just like we did at SeaWorld a few weeks ago. He's just hanging out literally in the middle of the rope obstacle course for us. Did you do that one, Elle, at SeaWorld, that course with the two ropes? Yeah. You went on that one? There he goes. He's pretty good at it. The 
really does feel like we're on safari. We're just sort of sitting by the banks here watching the gibbons go about their business. They have a series of islands for a lot of the animals and the rangers get around on these boats and it might be feeding time for these guys. You can see it stops them getting off the island and hang out there, but they do often have rope crossings to get to different places. Look at him! I have to get away from the ranger. He's just hanging out on the rocks. We're hanging out here on the seats, watching him. Oh, there goes his buddy, yeah? Look at his muscles. They have long Crazy. arms, don't they? I know. Such long arms. Nice arms. They're just long. Like Yeah. Like I can swing a truck that low, but not that far. And we've got a much? dozen blisters in the enjoying so. So they might be about to raise that now. Actually. Yeah, they might be lifting it up now, Jan. Must have known it was time to go over and have a bit of a play on the other island. We're just going up for him. Now I can get across. That is super cool. How cool is that? These apes here are so clever. They've been sitting on the rope so that the rangers can't pull it down. The rangers obviously wanted them off this island and over onto the other one. But the apes know that if they stay on that rope, which is on now, then they can't lower it. I think they've done it before. So it was a bit of a standoff, but the rangers have got in their car now. They've started it. The apes were watching. Are move. He's checking, yeah, you're right, Jad, that they're going to go. He's really checking. Are they really going? The rangers are trying to call their bluff. No. The I'd, other I'd, guy's gone over to the go island now. The, yeah, him. he's come over here now, so they, they don't want to there. leave him there, though. They want him over the other side. They're sneaking around the back. Monkeys seem comfortable. In the standoff between the rangers and the apes, the apes have won. Watching these magnificent animals is just something else. They're literally right there. They're not fenced. There's obviously a moat that they mustn't cross at all. And they're just hanging out there. He's just disappeared out of shot. But it's just stunning to sit here and just watch them. Such a cool setup. One of my favourite zoos, I think. We're rushing to the cheetah talk. We're not as quick as the cheetahs. But we're going to get there in time without listening to about them. We need to closely replicate what happens out in the wild. Um, in fact, on a Tuesday, they only get two chicken wings. Um, that, that's to kind of replicate if they can out the wild, like a bird or a rodent. Um, carcass feed on a Friday is obviously to replicate if they were very successful and they got something big. And sometimes they actually don't need to go out on the hunt the next day. I can't believe how close we're getting to these cheetahs. They are all around. And you're so close to these animals, it's amazing. Look at that, look how close you are. In Melbourne, you'd be behind a fence, behind glass, but here, we're like just over a little bit of water with turtles, right amongst it. Yeah, they're just coming out of the water. These elephants have been in the water for probably 10 minutes now. You can see them playing. We think it's a mum and a child. The child was rolling around on the mum, pretty much like our kids would in the pool too. Then the one behind, that little one, he was flicking up dirt on himself a moment ago. There's some pretty active elephants, probably some of the most active we've seen, I think. Very cool to watch. Ah, they're drying themselves off after their swim. Elephants' trunks are so complex. They are made up of 40,000 different muscles, but they have no bones or cartridges. 
and they're used for nearly mu pretty much everything showering from water breathing eating all sorts of different things well that's Dubbo Zoo I think that's my new favorite zoo that is something really really unique a really cool way to go around and see the animals and you're up so close to them all too they're built up sort of like with these um like barriers but just dirt barriers and then there's a fence below but you can't see it so you feel like you're in the field with a lot of the animals Definitely. did you have fun yeah it was amazing it's a great zoo that was really cool really close to animals certainly worth the trip out for. worth the trip to double yeah. like that that's awesome so i think mean, we've had power and water camped up next to the chickens the chickens are saying hello we're getting ready to go to parks now jed parks. what are we going to see at parks um a telescope the dish. Oh. We watched the dish movie last night. 